The next time you're at the supermarket, watch what people do when they decide whether or not to buy a product. They'll usually look at the price, and this is often the most important factor in their decision to buy the good or not. An important thing has happened here. The market has decided who gets the product and who doesn't. A type of rationing has occurred and the economic problem of what to produce and for whom to produce has been answered. So what problem am I talking about? Why is it necessary for things to be rationed? Well, unfortunately, there is not an unlimited supply of most of the goods we want on a daily basis. It's just an inconvenient fact of life that most of the things we want are scarce goods. Scarce goods are desirable products that are only available in limited quantities, such as meat, chocolates, magazines, milk, cool drinks, medical care, and so on. To obtain any of these scarce goods, you have to pay the going price for them. Now, if you're unable or unwilling to pay, you cannot have the good. You're excluded from obtaining the benefit of using it. Now, this might seem unfair. Indeed, it's tough for people with limited means to fulfill many of their consumer needs. So, why subject ourselves to this harsh and seemingly unfair system? Well, simply because the alternatives seem even worse. For instance, we could decide to distribute these scarce products randomly, perhaps dropping them all from aeroplanes. But what happens then? Well, some people might get what they want, others will get something they don't need, and some are still left with nothing. So not a very fair or efficient system either. We could try to distribute goods on a first-come, first-served basis. This inevitably leads to queuing, which is always inefficient. General frustration, short tempers, fighting, and sooner or later, corruption and bribery. The minimum wage law uh, has the effect of discriminating against the employment of low-skilled people. And who are low-skilled workers? Well, for the most part, they're teenagers. And uh, laws in the name of helping kids have destroyed many early work experiences. Now, a number of these labor laws that are on the books, that, that came on the books years ago, protected kids from working in dangerous mines and dangerous factories. Well, those same laws today uh, protect kids from uh, working in air-conditioned plush buildings and plush offices. Early work experiences are important for all young people. It's not the a little bit of money that they earn that's so very important. It's the other things that early work experiences uh, give you. Things like what well, you come to work on time, you have to respect the supervisor, you have to uh, maintain a certain demeanor. These are the kind of things that you learn from early work experiences that make you a more effective worker uh, in the future.